Are you interested in retiring financially in 10 years or less? Stay tuned. Today, I'm going to share with you exactly how to do it. Well, what I should say is today, I'm going to share with you exactly how I plan to do it. And hopefully you can learn from that to do it yourself. Hi, my name is Jim. I am in my 40s. I'll leave it at that. And I intend to retire by the time I am 50. Now, when I say retire, I don't mean that I want to stop working. I actually love working. I love making these videos. I love working on my online businesses. I love doing all of that. What I mean is that I would like the freedom to stop working on those things should I choose, or if something would happen in my life that would prohibit me from working on them, or if I decided I just wanted to take a year off and travel the world, or you know, maybe I want to take six months and hike the Appalachian Trail with my son, whatever it might be, if I wanted the freedom to not have to do this every single day, then I want that freedom. By that standard, what that means I need to do is I need to acquire sufficient financial assets so that I could live off the interest and dividends from those assets in perpetuity. Now, when most people think about how much money they're going to need to retire, they go by what is called in the financial circles, the rule of 24. And what the rule of 24 says basically is that you look at how much money you need to live off of each year, multiply it by 24, that's how much money you need to retire, financially that is. And the reason why that 24 number is so important is because that would allow you to pull out of your investment portfolio 4% of your assets each year and still have enough money to live off of in perpetuity, assuming the stock market returns about 7% per year. I'm not gonna go into the ins and outs as to whether or not this strategy is actually accurate, but suffice it to say that that's a general number that you're going to need to reach financial freedom. So if you spent $100,000 per year in expenses, then you would need approximately $2.4 million in assets to retire. And I think it goes without saying that the lower your income requirements, the less money you're going to need to retire. And conversely, the higher your income requirements, the more money you're going to need to set aside to retire. This is what is frequently referred to as the FIRE movement, which stands for financial independence, retire early. And I know you're probably thinking that I'm about to go down this rabbit hole that you need to save 80% of your money and live well below your means. And that's the fastest way to retire within 10 years because that's what people in the FIRE movement will tell you. But I'll be honest, I am not a huge fan of the way the FIRE movement has portrayed early retirement. And the way they portrayed early retirement is exactly what I just said. You live well below your means, you save like 80% of your income each year and then in five or six or 10 years, you can retire off of maybe a million dollars, maybe a little less than that. And basically you can pull 20 or 30 or $40,000 out of your investment portfolio each year and you call that retirement. I'm not a big fan of that. And there are a couple reasons why. The first reason is that it does not give you much wiggle room if the stock market crashes or if your expenses go up in a certain year more than you had anticipated, like in the situation right now in the United States with ridiculously high rates of inflation. Maybe you have a medical emergency that costs you a significant amount of money that you did not plan for when you were planning to retire early. Alternatively, it really limits what you can do in your retirement years. So yes, maybe it's fine to live off $30,000 a year for the rest of your life. And obviously that's going to scale with inflation and the value of your investment portfolio. But maybe you decide in 10 years that you know you really want to enjoy life a little bit more and you want to spend a little bit more money than thirty thousand dollars a year maybe life gets a little boring when you're only spending thirty thousand dollars a year and you want to travel more or you want to go to more exclusive resorts that would cost you you know, five or $10,000 to take a month and go to that resort. So from that standpoint, if you're practicing a minimalist lifestyle, now mind you, I'm not against the minimalist lifestyle. If you are constraining yourself so much that you're only living off 20 or 30 or $40,000 a year, it really doesn't give you a whole lot of flexibility if, you know, in 10 or 20 years, you decide that you would like to live off more than that. You have to remember that when we're talking about this fire lifestyle, it's financial independence, retire early. So if you're retiring when you're 30 years old and you're planning on living on $30,000 a year for the rest of your life, that's 40 years. That's a long time to live on a very small amount of money. Could you be able to do that? 
Maybe. Is it gonna give you the absolute best chance at financial freedom? I question that. But on the other hand, saving two and a half million dollars is a lot harder to do. And if you were starting from scratch with nothing in the bank right now, hopefully that's not where you're at. But if that is where you're at and you want to save two and a half million dollars within the next 10 years, if you assume a 7% return, which is what this stock market has historically returned over the last I don't know, 75 years or so, then you'd have to be putting away at least $14,000 a month to get to that two and a half million dollar number in the next 10 years. That's like what, $150,000 a year? Even if you're making 200 grand a year after taxes, that's all your money. So it's very unlikely that most people will be able to do that. Alternatively, let's say the stock market, you're lucky and the stock market returns 10% over the next 10 years, then you'd still have to put away $12,000 a month to get to that number. So this is still a really hard thing to do for most people, which means that the average US household is not going to get to this financial independence number within the next 10 years, which is why most people gravitate towards, oh, we're gonna do the fire movement and we're gonna live off as little money as possible so that we can save six or $700,000 over the next 10 years and then we can retire. And yes, that might work for some people. For me personally, that doesn't work. I don't, I don't like that idea. You know, I don't wanna sacrifice my future just because I want to retire in 10 years with $700,000 in the bank. Doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me. That's where, again, I think people are really gonna be pissed at me with this video. Of course, 10 years is a pretty arbitrary number, right? Maybe you're looking to accomplish financial independence in five years, or maybe 20 years is more your style. It really just depends on what you're thinking. The goal here, though, is to reach financial independence. And if you don't have a plan to get there, then I'll be honest with you, it's just not going to happen. And if it never happens, then sooner or later, one of two things is going to happen. Either one day you're gonna wake up and you're gonna be in your late 60s or 70s and you're gonna say, geez, I'm still working every day. I can't enjoy my life. This sucks. But now you're not gonna have any time to really do what you need to do, or maybe even potentially the energy to do what you need to do to get to that financial independence number. Or second, you're going to be lying on your deathbed one of these days and you're gonna look back and say, what did I really accomplish? Was I ever truly free in my lifetime? And I wasn't. Because when you finally do achieve financial independence, and full disclosure, I'm not there yet, but here's what I imagine it's going to be like. You can enjoy life without worrying about where your next paycheck is going to come from or how much money you need to set aside for retirement because you're already going to be there. So what I wanna share with you today is how I would propose to retire within 10 years without sacrificing what I would say is an enjoyable standard of living. And I realize this is completely arbitrary and there's a ton of people out here that are gonna hate me for this video, which is why I'm gonna take a sip out of my Miyagi-Do karate mug today because I'm about to drop some lessons on you. So there really are four things that you need to do if you would like to retire within the next 10 years, or more specifically for me, within the next four or five years. The first thing you need to do is you need to be an entrepreneur. You need to start your own business. Now, could you do this without being an entrepreneur or without having your own business? You could, but you would need to be a really high wage earner for somebody else's company and you would need to have the discipline to save a significant amount of that money, which we already talked about is not the best way to pursue an early retirement strategy in my opinion. And the reason why this is front and center in my mind right now is I just wrote a blog post that was talking about Laura Roeder. Now, if you don't know who Laura Roeder is, she started Meet Edgar, which is a social media automation tool, a software as a service tool. She started that company back in 2014. At the time, she was running a social media agency slash consultancy. She was selling a bunch of digital courses on how to build your social media platforms, things of that sort. And she saw a hole in the market where people needed to really automate more of their social media. So she created with her husband, I believe, Meet Edgar. And she sold it after about seven years for what she calls a life-changing amount of money. All of this was possible because Laura is an entrepreneur. This would not have been possible if she was working at some social media company for an hourly wage. And I think the lesson to be taken from this is that when you are trading time for money, in other words, you're an employee, so you've got a set amount of money that you're making each month. It's really a scarce mindset, right? You are limiting the amount of money you can make, and your earning ability is really capped at what that 
company is choosing to pay you. So if you want to get wealthy really fast, shorten the time frame to reach financial independence, you have to either impact a lot of people that pay you a little bit of money each year, or you have to impact a few people who pay you a lot of money each year. If you impact a lot of people who all pay you a lot of money each year, that's how you end up like Tony Robbins and you become a billionaire. Now, the next thing you need to know or do to retire within the next 10 years is you need to understand that building a business is scary. So if you're thinking about becoming an entrepreneur, you need to understand that it is not easy and there are moments where it's going to be scary. I have, to be perfectly honest, lived the last 17 years of my life or so as an entrepreneur. And for the most part, I have not been that scared about it. And it's just come to my realization within the past several days that this is one of the reasons why my businesses have not grown to a higher level than more than, I think at its peak, we were earning around a half a million dollars per year. To scale from there to a million dollars a year or to $10 million a year, I have to get out of my comfort zone. I have to get out of my way and I have to recognize the fear that I'm feeling about growing to that level. I heard a really amazing podcast yesterday from Brooke Castillo. She was interviewing Ryan Moran on the Life Coach School podcast and they were talking about feeling the feelings. And the general idea here is that you have to feel your feelings to be truly successful. Now, what do I mean by that? What I mean by that is like right now, me personally, I am scared of the idea of investing more money in my business. I'm scared that I'm gonna fail. I feel some shame thinking that maybe I'm not going to be as successful as I hope to be. And so that is holding me back. And so for me to be truly successful, and for you to be truly successful, what you have to do is you have to really embrace what you're feeling and understand the emotion behind what you're feeling and really process that. As I say it right now, it's starting to stir up emotions in me just as I'm recording this video. And this is how powerful this can be because I know what I need to do to take my business to the next level, but I'm scared to do it. So I make excuses. You know, for some people, those excuses mean they overeat or means they don't go exercise like they should. Or maybe it means they just sit in bed and don't get out and post that blog post they need to post or record the YouTube video they need to do or record their podcast or put forth the next offer for their business. Or in my case, you know, spend some more money on ads that are going to drive more leads to my business, which is what I honestly really need to do. But there's fear that's holding you back. And so you need to recognize and process that fear and move beyond it to have true success with your business. Which brings us to the third thing that you need to do to retire within the next 10 years, and that's that you need to take calculated risks and bet on yourself. So once you process those emotions, those feelings that are holding you back, you need to start taking action and you need to bet on yourself. And I have some news for you and you're not gonna like it. Not everything is going to work in your business you are going to lose money. Not every promotion is going to work the way you wanted to. And as I was saying before, this is where I have really struggled with my business and not taking the action that I needed to take to get the results that I want to have for myself. Because honestly, I could probably retire, I could probably be to where I need to be in a year. You could probably be to where you need to be in a year. But the reason why most people don't get there that fast is because like I said before, they've got all these emotions and baggage and things that, that they had growing up as a child and all these limiting beliefs that are holding them back from getting to the next level. But once you get through that, you could probably get to where you need to be very fast. It's just a matter of processing those emotions and then doing the things that you need to do to take your business and yourself to the next level. And once you do that, now you're at level four. And level four is where you start to build an asset that you can either sell for the amount of money that you need to reach financial independence, or you build an asset in your business that starts to pay you as an owner or investor in the business rather than as an employee. Because once you're paid as an owner or investor in the business then rather than as an employee, what that means is you don't have to be working in the business every single day. You can sit back and passively bring in paychecks each month without having to actively go to the office 
or go to your home office or record a video or whatever it is that you would like to do for your business. You don't have to do that anymore because now you're starting to hire other people and build systems into your business that will allow you to just take that paycheck, take that profit check each month rather than actually working in the business. So as I'm sitting here editing, literally editing this video today, I realized I didn't put the ending on the video. And so what I want you to know is that, that I'm not there yet. I'm still working on my business. I'm still working on myself personally and mentally what I need to do to reach that goal of retiring in the next five to 10 years. I have a lot of mental hurdles that I have to work through, just like you probably have a lot of things that you need to work through. But when I do work through those things, and when you are able to work through those things, I want you to take a minute and think about how amazing your life will be once you finally reach that point where you're able to financially retire yourself. How how nice that's going to be for you. How nice that's going to be for your family, the gifts you're gonna be able to give them and the freedom that you're gonna be able to give them. And that's the transformation that you're gonna go through if you're able to put in the work now to get to where you wanna be. Because at that point, you'll have a lifetime annuity that basically pays you so that you can live the life you want on your terms. And that's what we all want, right? That's what, we're, that's what we're going for. Anyway, you like what I'm talking about here? Here's another video right here that talks more about my journey with financial independence. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you in the next video.